Welcome back, my digital mutants. It is me, Domico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media, and I am back here on the channel. So I know at the beginning of the year I talked about doing a lot more a lot more things for the channel and getting a lot more videos out there, and I apologize for that. Uh, this year has started off crazy cuckoo um, with the fact of now working with uh, a national training company. So right now, currently once a month, I'm going out and I'm doing trainings all across the country. I have been all up and down the eastern seaboard in the middle of America. So the last two months, I've been doing all that stuff, uh, training Photoshop, Illustrator, and the other Adobe products. So, um, you know, been going out doing all that stuff around the country. So that's been really cool, but it's taken away from the time that I've had to be able to actually get out the videos. Um, because besides that, I'm still a full-time professor. Um, so I do apologize for not getting the videos pumped out as, as possible as quickly as I would like them to. But I am back, and I'm going to try to get out a video a week and start to do more in-depth series. So not do as much stuff that's going to be um, just little tips, but more so doing a complete project. One of the projects that I've been working on here lately have been my two-hour build projects. Now, it's two hours to build these things if I'm working by myself and I'm not explaining things as I'm going and I kind of just go through it. But with these projects that I'll be doing here on YouTube on the extended format, I'll be taking a little bit more time explaining some of the things that I'm doing and actually taking you through the process. So, for example, I have two finished pieces. So, the first finished piece is this uh, sniper rifle. It is a Halo sniper rifle. It is completely, it was completely modeled, textured, unwrapped, and rendered in two hours. So, these are two hour projects that I've been trying to put together here for the channel and for myself and really just more so getting back into the swing of things, getting back into modeling full time and just kind of going with it. So the first one that I did was this um, Halo sniper rifle. I didn't even know it came from Halo until after I finished it. I found the blueprints for it and did the Halo sniper rifle. Um, after that I did the AK-47, the Anna Kalishnikov 47 model 47 because there actually are other AK models besides the 47 but the 47 is the most known now you're probably thinking like oh my goodness is Dr. Media a gun nut yes yes I am a gun nut but gun nut in the appropriate way meaning that I really love um, weaponry I really love firearms and in that vein I decided to do one of my favorite firearms for this particular video series and if you've played many games if you if you're a Call of Duty fan or any of the other modern shooters type of fan you've probably seen this weapon at some point um, these this weapon is actually um, pretty pretty synonymous with uh, with when it comes to warfare and it's made by a company called Fabrique National, um, and they're a Belgium, they're a Belgian manufacturer. So, and I'm going, I went right to their website because I really like, and this is their American website, of course. But the FNC, and that's where the FN comes from, right? So if you if you ever heard the 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 uh, the PS90, the Fabrique National or, or National um, is the company. That's what the FN in uh, FN stands for. So the SCAR, the FS2000, and the PS90, uh, as well as they make a, they make a, MK, they make a uh, 15, which, anyway, for me, I have always been a huge fan of the PS90. The PS90 is one of my favorite, just looking modern weapons. I remember seeing those during the 80s because the PS90 is not a new uh, carbide firearm. It is a very old weapon um, but I really have always enjoyed the way the PS90 looks it's a very compact rifle um, now usually when you see these in in like military use they have a shorter barrel uh, and those things are actually illegal you can't have those things as a civilian um, well you can but you need special permission to have the short the shortened barrel and and things like that especially something with a 
um, you know, with the receiver end on the end of it, where you can put compensators and stuff like that on um, to these weapons. And this is a this is a semi-automatic weapon now for, well, at least a semi-automatic for consumers. You know, of course, military weapon can be fully automatic, but as a civilian, you can't own a fully automatic weapon. At least you shouldn't. Um, but the the PS90 series of weapons are really cool. They have a 50 round clip, and they have a bottom discharge for the cartridges as you're firing. The, the thing that I really like about this gun is that it's epidextrous, so you can pick it up, and whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you can use this gun. Um, and then it's compact size. It's very, like I say, the the very compact size of it, and it has this very. I like the way that the uh, cartridges or the mags on this are top loading. So the mags are top loading on this particular weapon. Now a lot of people know the SCAR um, in the FS, well, in, in the FS2000 series, but they're all made by FN. So all these are made by FN. But like I say, I'm a huge fan of the PS90. So I've gotten some images of my PS90, and that's going to be the weapon that we build today. I think in the next video series that we do, we're probably going to do an MP40, which is a um, World War, uh, World War One, World War Two, one more. I can't remember which war, um, but it was a German, well, yeah, German weapon. So it was a, it was a German, um, a German submachine gun, and we'll probably do that in the next video series. But today. We'll, we'll be doing the FN PS90. And I guess one of the things that made me want to do the PS90 is the fact that I've been playing uh, Tom Clancy's The Division from Ubisoft, which is a fantastic MMO modern shooter. I really enjoy what I've played so far. And one thing that kind of hurts my soul is that they have included the FN um, F2000 as well as another uh, FN, they have the FN SCAR, and they have the FN F2000, which they, they kind of improperly name it, it's the FS2000, but they have those two weapons from FN, but unfortunately there is no PS90, at least not currently right now. Now maybe they'll add one later on, but right now there's no 90. Um, and I think the 90 is a very, I really do, I think it is a very classic and a very recognizable gun. Kind of like the AK-47. You can show somebody the silhouette of an AK-47 and they're going to be like, AK-47. Um, it's just one of those guns that is, is very, you know, kind of timeless. And and some people some people actually mistake the, the FN or the, the F-2000 series for the PS90 and they're not the same gun as you can see right here they're two different models from FN um, so anyway and uh, we're gonna get back and the the whole process for this we're gonna work uh, and the process that I use for the rest of these weapons they were built inside of silo so we'll be modeling in silo as opposed to max or Maya uh, and as everyone knows from watching this channel I'm not an elitist. I don't think that Silo is a completely better program. I don't think that Max and Maya are no longer valid. I have been a Max. I have been a Max user since 2001, and I was a Maya user even longer. I've been a Maya dabbler um, since 1986, and I've been a professional Maya user since 2000. So, so for about 16 years, I've been a Maya user, and I love Maya. I think Maya is the cornerstone of the media industry. I think it is a fantastic program. Sometimes I just think that it's overkill when I'm just doing things like modeling. Uh, so for that vein, I actually have started kind of going farther out into the, into the microcosm of the world and landed upon Silo probably about nine years ago at this point and really just liked the program it was it was the, their whole thing was the zen of modeling and i kind of get that the controls are very simplistic uh, and the fact of you know you get what you need the interface is is not daunting because there's some 3d programs out there that the interface kind of makes you not want to use the program at all so anyway we're going to be modeling this inside of silo and once we finish in silo, we'll be taking this into another one of my favorite programs, which is 3D Coat. 3D Coat is a sculpting, retopology, painting, and even rendering uh, application. 
Uh, 3D Coat is probably one of the first programs, at least to do it right in an integrated package, to have PBR shaders as well as traditional pixel uh, texturing and then having a unwrap system that is very much like UV layout. UV layout is a great layout tool that does nothing but laying out UVs of course but inside of 3D Coat I have some similar pretty similar type of workflows that go very quickly so we'll be using that for our texturing and unwrapping process of our weapon. The last piece of the puzzle is going to be Marmoset. Uh, Marmoset is a great program for any game art student. If you are a game artist and you want to be able to show your models off and you want a very inexpensive way to do that, you want an inexpensive way to, to actually render, Marmoset is a real-time renderer. I currently use Marmoset version 2. It's about 130 bucks, and it is a fantastic real-time rendering system. So everything you're seeing right now, like all the AK-47, all these things, like the Victoria Fire, the Victorian Fireman's Mask, all of these things were rendered inside of Marmoset. And you can see, you get these, you know, nice world globes, and the lighting that's done in there is all completely comes from the skylight. You can add in additional lights, but you know, not even knowing how to render, you can go in there and get some pretty detailed renders. Uh, just case in point, this was rendered inside of Keyshot version 5, which is really more for product shots and um, things of that nature. And this is about, oh, I'd say a 15 minute render out of Keyshot with the model. And the Victorian Fire Mask, like this, the minute that I brought it into Marmoset, it was already rendered. Like this is the view that I see for the rendered finished piece. So that's what that is. So anyway, when we get back, I'm going to set up my images inside of, I've got some images. Now the funny thing is when it comes to weapons, you can usually find blueprints for different weapons. Some weapons are harder to find blueprints for. Some weapons are really hard to find more than one view for. Because even for like the manufacturer, they have the side profile view because, well, that's what people want to see. People really want to see the overall length and, and breadth of the, of the, um, of the weapon and not as much kind of like floating around it because the profile of a weapon is pretty much the big part of it right so it's easy to find the side view pictures but a little bit harder to find the pictures that are going to show me the top the bottom the back and give me the dimensions of this so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up using a lot of a lot of images that come from here well, the image that comes from here, rather, and then some other images that I have of PS90s, and I'm going to do a little bit of creative license when it comes to some things, so it's not going to be 100% correct. Now, I do, have some, I do have some breakdown pictures of PS90s, so I can see some of the internal working pieces, but, like I say, it's not going to be 100%. So, we will start working on that when we get into our next video, and we'll be right back. All right, so welcome back. And as we get started, all right, welcome back, my digital minions. It is I, Dr. Media, with your digital prescription fix. So, we talked about in the last video, the start of this series, we're going to be working on our PS90, sorry, FN PS90. And we're, we're going to do a standard because there's a, there's, there's a, there's a bunch of PS90s that you could do. And I kind of looked at this last time, um, but even outside of that, there's a, there's a lot of PS90s. The standard one that we talked about is the one that you can buy as a civilian. But some of the other ones that are modified for military use, you cannot purchase those. At least not legally, you can't purchase those. So we'll be, we'll be doing this, the PS90 and we'll be doing the standard version of it. So I'm going to bring in my images first. So if you don't know, if you've never used Silo and you want to get into using Silo, Silo is a great program too. Um, Silo is right around, I think I want to say it's 160 I think it might be $160. And Silo is only a modeling program. Well, I shouldn't say that. It does more than just modeling. You can poly model inside of, inside of Silo. 
you can unwrap inside of Silo. And Silo has a very unique unwrapping system. It has a 2D view as well as a 3D UV view, which is very kind of odd, but interesting at the same time. You can see yourself in three dimensions and be unwrapping it. Um, but you can also sculpt inside of Silo at a very low level. It's not going to be anything comparable to, say, ZBrush, Mudbox, or Sculptress, or even 3D Coat for that matter. But you can do some basic sculpting inside of Silo, much like you can do basic sculpting inside of Maya or Max, because they also have basic sculpting tools inside of those programs, as well as like, you know, so they, they've, always, they've always been there. So anyway, first thing I'm going to do is bring in my image. So I'm going to go here to my, make sure I'm in my right view, and I'm going to say, go down here to display, and I want to set my viewport image. And let's go to my desktop. I've got a couple of these images in there, so I'm going to look at this in large view so I can see it. And there's my broken down image I've got, and I'm going to open it. Now, that's not great. And it's a really small image. I think I have another copy of this image. Let's make sure. Let's make sure that I have another image so I'm going to save it make sure I've I think I do so I'm going to go back in here again and let's say I want to set the viewport image and I think this is the better this might be the better one there we go oh yeah oh, I didn't mean to flip it did not mean to flip it I think it was still selected, so let's, let's just reset it. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna end up using, or end up starting with my simple image here, and let's see what view I'm looking at. Let's make sure. Oh yeah, I think it's gonna be this. Let's make sure. Oh, it's not selected anymore. So when you deselect it, you need to go back here and say select viewport image. And now my viewport image is actually selected. Let's see if it's rotated at some weird angle or something like that. And it's not. So let's go in here and just rotate it. Let's rotate it. And you can even scale it. So I'll scale this up. There we go. And deselect. So you can see now I've got a pretty decent looking image. That first one was kind of trashy and you know it was a little bit uh a little bit blurry, but this is a lot better for an image. So, got my image in there. So, I'm going to need to start setting up my I want to set up my geometry based on my side view. So, on my side view, I want to make sure that this is lining up where I need it to be. And then I'm going to use my other my other view, like my perspective and my front view, to make sure dimensions are getting matched. So inside of here, I'm going to go in here and say create. I'm going to say I'm going to create a cube. Or you can also hit Alt-C, and it'll make you a cube. So I've got my cube sitting right there. I'm going to move my cube. Now, one thing that's a little bit different inside of, inside of Silo as compared to other 3D programs is that your keys kind of line up to where they should be. So when you hit the R key, the R key is the rotation key. Um, the W key is the translate key, and the E key is the scale key. So W E R, like you know, like everything else. So I'm gonna hit W and move this kind of where this needs to be. And you can see by doing that, I now know the relationship between the this part of my weapon and where I am in 3D space and where my actual model is going to be at. So you can see I now have some real relation, some still, some still, some real um, relationships between objects and I know where things are at now. So that's, that's very useful. The other thing I can do is I can come in here and I'm going to right click on my object and I like, I really do like this, is the fact that I can ghost so I can come in here and say that I want to ghost that. Uh, so I can say object display mode and I can turn on ghosting. 
So I can have ghosting turned on for individual objects and not for everything in the viewport. So with that, I'm going to come in here and go to face mode. Face mode is underneath the D key. So when you hit D, that goes into face mode. Let's make sure. Yep, and see that's that's something good we had to make sure of right there. Because you can see I'm pulling this what appears to be down in my in my world here. So I'm pulling this down, but it looks like in my right view that this is actually going up. In my front view it's going down. So realistically this would be the orientation of everything if I went off of the way this is currently set up. So what I could do, and you can see in here Y is down, and in here Y is up, and Y is up in here. So this one's kind of funky, right? So this one's just a little bit out of whack, as it were, because it's really not right because if this is going to be the right way this this wouldn't be like this so we need to we need to make sure we figure out what's going on with this before we move on All right so let's go in here and I'm just going to look at let's say that's to world let's see if we do it to objects and see and other manipulator to object, and they should match. I mean, world and object should be matching up at this point. So that's a little weird. No, that's still like that. Oh, you know what? That's why my image probably came in flipped because it knew that. And I'm just gonna go select my viewport image and. Yeah, it did, because when I did this, I rotated this the other way. So we can fix this. I can either model a different way in the other two viewports, or I can just end up rotating my image, which that'll probably be easier, just to rotate my image. And I'll rotate this on X and say 180. So now let's go back and grab this. And honestly, I'll be very honest with you, it doesn't really matter to me how this is modeled. Because as long as my views and stuff are appropriate, then huzzah. It's kind of weird though. I don't know if I like that. Let me let me pause and see what's going on with this. Let me pause for a second and see what's going on with this. Alright. Uh, I fixed it. And I'm going to tell you how I fixed it. Because we were looking at our right view, and if I look at this, and I'll do, I'll do it brand new all over again. So I'll show you. I don't want to leave you hanging. So if you notice, in my left view, Y is up. And in my front view, Y is up. Right? So those are matching and if I look at this right now I could see that on my left view that this would be the orientation from my left kind of so I'm gonna come in here and my left view seems like it's right now and I'm going to hit display and set the image and let's go get our image again hit open I'm gonna make another cube so alt C to make a cube so you can see when I pull this back you'll see it's going the appropriate way in my view when I pull it down you'll see in the front view it goes down and in my side view on the left side it goes down so now by the views being appropriate everything is right so we're good we are good we are good 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 so got that let's get that right about there and I want to kind of set this up from the very beginning that it's almost the right thickness so I'm going to bring this right here and get my scale tool and scale this down a little bit and it's right here and just from knowing this weapon so well 
and that's the thing you need to know. You need to know what you're modeling. You need to know the object in which you're modeling to make sure that you are modeling it appropriately. All right? So that's there. And on my front view, let's add another, let's add an image here. I'm going to add the same image here. So I'm going to set image and go down here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I do have a piece, I do have something that kind of shows me um, the thickness of my gun. And if you paid attention, you would see it. There's the back piece of the stock right there. This shows me realistically the width of my gun. Right? Because this piece right here fits on the back part of the stock of the gun. So I do have something that shows me kind of the basic width and the curvature that I need. So even though I don't have a picture that shows me everything, you can see I'm using details of the world to be able to, you know, kind of get it the way that I want it to be, which is really kind of cool, right? It's kind of awesome. Kind of awesome. So that's good. And I'll use this front view like that. I'll move things around and get the front view kind of set up the way that I need it to be. So, and because I know the circum the the at least half of the circumference of the barrel, I know how big the barrel should be round. I know the whole radian of the barrel. Haha. -ha. So there are things that you can look at that will give you clues when you're using images like this to model from. Things like the handle are going to be a little tricky, but you know that's that's what it is. So let's let's get let's get start modeling. Let's model. <laughs> let's model, model, model. So I am going to right here on my piece. I'm going to go to face mode. So I'm going to hit D. Go to face mode, and I want to extrude this. So I can come in here and just hit extrude, and get my extrusion. Extrude this down just like about that, and I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to get my scale tool and I'm going to scale this in a little bit. It's kind of like that. All right, so I'm going to scale that in a little bit, kind of like that. And I'm going to go ahead and let's say for the whole thing, I'm going to go ahead and drag this all the way back to right there. And even though my picture is showing things at angles, I'm going to keep things relatively straight because I, the, the, the problems that are probably happen probably come from the fact that the image, when it was taken, things were not lined up on a grid. They were just taking pictures of the breakdown of their MP, of their PS90. So I'm going to take that into account as well. And right here, I'm going to actually extrude again. So I'm extrude up a little bit, and let's scale this out just a tiny amount. So let's scale that out some, just like that. And I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to reselect my background image. So say select viewport image, and I'm going to move this viewport image around to get this right there. So it's lined up with the profile a bit better so yeah I can see I'm doing I'm going about it the right way and I'm gonna go back and hit D and then I can extrude this and I cut it and let's extrude it so I can come in here and extrude it now if you didn't know the Z key on your keyboard inside of silo is the extrude key so you hit Z and you just go to it, it lets you extrude, which is awesome. So hit Z and it gets my extrude tool. So I'm going to pull this like right about here. And let's scale this. So let's scale this in. Something like that. And I probably do want to, I probably actually want to want to add a center line to all of this maybe we'll think about it we'll keep it like it is right now and maybe add one later so one thing that I really like about modeling here inside of silo and I'm gonna hit S so I can get my edges so inside of silo I can hit S and get my edges 
and these rounded pieces like right here those guys I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna bevel them and I'll turn on my bevel and you'll see look at that gives me a nice bevel that I can click and drag and there's my beveled edge and everything is kosher with that it's a little copacetic so it's a nice little rounded piece to this looks pretty good so far and I can see this bevel because now I've beveled it which is awesome I'm gonna come back in here and go back hit enter and hit D to get my faces again so these faces right here I'm going to extrude them it's a small amount so extrude like this actually I should have grabbed everything sorry about that I'll go ahead and grab everything and then extrude this forward right about let's say right here all right and then I'm gonna hit enter and then extrude again and right about to here uh, let's say right there so something's happening to this as this goes down this is actually scaling down as it looks like so I'm just going to get the ring right here. And I'm going to get my scale tool, kind of scale this in a little bit. So scale that in. It's kind of like that. I think that looks pretty good. So this one here this one here, this one here, this one here. I'm going to keep extruding forward till right about here. Yep, like right about there. Hit enter. So now I'm going to start making some adjustments with my actual vertices because when you're when you're modeling, you have to think about this. When you're modeling, your your selections should be as follows. When you're making really small adjustments, then use vertices. If you're making large adjustments, use edges or faces. Um, that's kind of how I look at this stuff. And that's always proven me right over time. Now, something that's very, I won't say it's odd, but you have to get used to it. Inside of Silo, you want a middle mouse click and drag to get both sides of your model's vertices selected. Um, unlike other programs, you have to grab grab it that way. If you don't, you don't grab them all. If you just left mouse click and drag, you'll only grab the side that you see. Um, so you have to get used to middle mouse clicking and dragging so you can grab both sides so that you know that you're moving your model you know, in proportions the right way. So that's right here, that's the top part where the receiver part goes. So I go this, and this will come up a little bit more. So this right here is where I want to, you know, make some additional cuts so that I can um, have the, the thumb hole. So this is for your thumb. Your thumb goes through this, and then your finger hits, sits here on the trigger and safety and all the other kind of cool stuff down there. All that cool stuff, all the stuff you need to actually be safe with a gun. Because as much as I love guns, you have to have proper safety. I'm a firm believer in that. Don't just go around, I'm going to get a gun. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't be that guy. Because that guy ends up hurting people. Because um, they're, they're stupid. That guy, that guy is stupid. You shouldn't just run around... You should you should always maintain proper gun safety, uh, and if you have not taken a gun class, I suggest you take one before running off and trying to fire a gun and do all kind of crazy things like that. Um, that's just me. I'm a firm believer in gun safety. Yes, yes, yes. I am. I am. I am. So this is here. And let's do one more extrusion. 
Let's take this out to right about about here. I'm gonna hit enter to end that off. So I've got some things that are going on here. One thing that I know I want to do is I want to add an additional line that cuts through the whole body so that I can not have to cut all the way down here to get this hole in there. So I am going to go in here and go to edge mode. So I'll hit S to go to edge mode. Use my middle mouse click and drag to grab all that stuff on both sides. And I can do a split loop. And the cool thing about my split loop in here is that I can slide this loop. So you can see I can slide it. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. I can slide that where I want it to be. Hit enter and it's there. It's awesomeness. So I'm going to go in here to vertex mode just for a second and grab these. And I'm going to scale these so they're flat. And let's grab this stuff right here and pull this in a little bit. Middle mouse, pull this in a little bit, and middle mouse, and pull this in a little bit. Because that profile does actually curve a little bit on the uh, PS. And grab this, and middle mouse click and drag, and grab this. So now it has that nice rounded edge to it, and that's what I want it. So in here, I'm going to grab this stuff right here, and I'm going to pull this a little bit right here. Grab this and pull this down right about a bit right there. This, and this is going to come over here a little bit more. So you can see what I was doing, right? I'm setting up for that hole. I'm setting up for the hole, and I'm going to do another cut all the way around. So I like to keep my models very low poly at first. And when I need polygons, I start adding in polygons. But I don't add in polygons until I need them. So I try to wait before I do that. I don't just add stuff in arbitrarily. And it's like, oh, look, a bunch of polygons. No, that's, that's insane. So I'm going to grab that whole loop. And I'm going to scale this loop. Scale that loop flat because I don't want it to match the kind of curvature. So now that's scale flat, go in here and get my vortices. And let's move these suckers around a little bit. This here, this here. Now, the other thing about it is you can triangulate some of this stuff when you uh, finish out your real model. Like, you don't need all of this in there. You can triangulate things. Triangles are not bad. I don't. If if you've heard triangles are bad, then somebody somebody's fooling you. Somebody's joshing you, as they would say. Triangles are not bad. You just have to know where you want to use triangles at. That's the big problem with triangles. You've got to know where you want to use triangles. Um, but they're not, they're, not in, they're not innately a bad thing to have. So I'm going to split that loop that way and enter on it and select that loop. Get my scale tool and scale that loop as flat as I can get it. And there we go. So I like that. That looks that looks that looks dandy. Go in here and get my vertices, middle mouse click and drag, and grab this and here and this here. And let's grab this again and go here. And this come right here. Maybe even pull this back a little bit so it's right there on that. And let's get this one kind of right here on this. So you can see that I am actually moving stuff pretty cleanly. I try not to um, move, you know, stuff in crazy weird ways too much. Try to keep things nice and clean for my models. I'm a clean modeler. Try to keep them. Try to keep things as nice and clean as possible when I'm modeling. All right, just like that. Booyah. Boom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, this stuff right here, nice and clean. Nice and clean. I won't sing. I'm sorry, I won't sing. Um, so keeping things nice and clean as possible. And 
And like I said, these are these normally are two hour things. When I'm working, when I'm just going, in, when I'm just going at this, I'm going. So there's not a lot of talking. So, but as I'm doing this with you all, I'm gonna talk so I can bring stuff together. So just like we were just talking about, triangles are not bad. So one thing that's happening right now is that this line, is, these two lines are running all the way through my model. Well, I don't really need both of those lines. This is this is relatively flat right here. So I don't need those two pieces of geometry. That's adding a lot of, not a lot, but it's adding a fair amount of polygons that I don't really need. They don't, I don't, I don't need them. The body of the model there is smooth, so there's no point to have them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge these back together. So I'm gonna merge this. And I'm gonna actually merge these these guys back together. So boom, boom and bring those back together so I can go in here and merge them so this right here and I'm trying to remember nope anyway let me go in here and that's right. The keys are not the keys are really different in here. Not really, but so Control Alt Z will repeat last command. So I'm gonna go in here and merge. And now I should be able to hit Control Alt Z and merge. Yeah, there it worked. It worked. So let's make sure we do both sides of our model. Let's make sure we do both sides of this guy. So boom, boom, control out Z merge. And you'll notice I'm doing the same operation over and over again. I am clicking, I'm going from the top one to the bottom one. So I'm going from here to here. So and merge and merge and merge. So I've merged them. I'm going to select both sides and it's really weird. What happened to my what happened to my selection tool? And go in here and move that around. So I think I hid that. So let's make sure. Yep, show manipulator. I go in here and grab these two. I bring this back to the center. And bring this back to the center. As it were. So now I can adjust some of this stuff here. I can Kind of pull this here, and pull this here, pull this here. I told you I wouldn't sing, didn't I? Sorry, sorry. Modeling makes me happy, though. So sometimes I just bust out in the song. So it happens, people. I'm just saying, it does happen. Sometimes the song just just can't just can't stop yourself. You just gotta you gotta feel it. You gotta feel it. Ooh, yeah, f f f feel it. So I'm gonna bring this back, and I'll bring this back right about there. This is gonna be a tricky modeling piece right here because this is this got a, this has a lot of things going on to uh, make this look correct. A lot, a lot, a lot of things going on. You got you got multiple angles you gotta worry about with this particular thing. So I'm trying to get it as close as possible when I first start. So now when I come in here, I've got to get rid of some things. So the things I'm gonna get rid of are these faces right here on both sides, of course, right? So bloom. Get the other ones. Kabloom. 
because you need to do this to this. This is open now. And you're like, oh my god, D, what did you do? Oh, I'm going to turn off Let's turn off the working grid. So here I'm going to actually go into edge mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge these guys together. So and I thought they had the bridge command in here, but I guess not. It's okay. Bridge. Shift B is bridge. Sorry, I'm getting it. I'm gonna get the singing in there somehow, so might as well just get used to it. Shift B is bridge. You gotta make a bridge. So shift B it. Now, something people are gonna ask, like, well, can you just do all that at one time? Yes, you can, but I, I. I don't do all of them at once because sometimes I've had issues where the bridge didn't work correctly and the next thing you know I've got a whole bunch of stuff and I'm like what's that stuff and um you know it's it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on so now that I've got this in there I'm gonna go back to face mode so face 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 your booty I told you it's gonna come in it's gonna happen so I'm gonna bevel this and it's really not beveling the way I want it to bevel or how I want it to bevel let's see if I and this might not work let's see though let's extrude it yeah so I'll extrude it instead of beveling it so I'll extrude this right here and I'll bevel it by hand so now I can come in here and grab this and pull this in just like that so that gives me that nice kind of rounded edge of what that's gonna be this stuff right here doesn't need to come down though like this right here does not need to kinda of come down this needs to stay up at the level of where it started at and this stuff here needs to now come in so let's go to vertex mode yeah you know, I know you're thinking like how in the world are you gonna make that kinda weird you know thumb hole thingy well now you see it's not that hard you have to plan because my geometry is already there I just plan for it All right? So I have enough geometry to get this all the way around and actually get a smooth uh, version of this. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right. So go back. And now this can just come forward a little bit where it's supposed to be. And this can come back a little bit where it's supposed to be. And I could get rid of more polygons if I chose to, because I'm don't they're not they're not all needed, right? Like all this stuff up here is not needed, but I'm gonna keep this I'm gonna keep this stuff because there's some things that happen that need to happen there. But um, I could maybe I'll do that in a cleanup video. Like I'll do a video, not a not a separate video, but when we get closer to the end of this, we'll say, hey, this is how you could clean up your model to make it even more impressive to people so you can see that if I go in here and subdivide it so inside of silo to subdivide something all you have to do is hit the C key so you hit the C key and it subdivides it and you can see look at that that's like rounded that's nice and round look at that it's still beveled up here nice and clean and rounded right here which is awesome and to come out of subdivision mode just hit V so C will step into subdivision and subdivide and V will step out of subdivision and stop subdividing and take it so now that I've done that I've done this kind of really complicated thing where I've shown you how to kind of take this apart I, I that's like one of the most complicated things of this gun to do everything else is gonna be pretty 